Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Sophie Erber. A Siouxland man has been identified as one of the victims in a deadly shooting. It happened at a southern Nebraska grain elevator. Details now in our top story at 5. The Nebraska State Patrol tonight says the shooting happened Thursday afternoon at the Agrex elevator in Superior, Nebraska. 53-year-old Darren Kepka of Hayter, Nebraska was fatally shot. So was a woman from Kansas. The third victim was treated and released from a hospital. A preliminary investigation found that 61 year old Max Hoskinson of Superior was fired on Thursday. The patrol there says he came back around two in the afternoon and opened fire. An Agrex employee then retrieved a shotgun from an office and returned fire, striking Hoskinson, who later died at a hospital. The NSP says no charges are anticipated against that employee who returned fire in protection of himself and of others. Today, a Sioux City man was charged in connection with a deadly shooting back in court, the pretrial hearing for Lawrence Kennedy. He is charged with willful injury, assault while participating in a felony, assault causing bodily injury or mental illness, and using a juvenile to commit an indictable offense. Kennedy was arrested after 22-year-old Martez Harrison was shot outside a bar and later died from his injuries. He's also charged in connection to the case. Dwight Evans has also been charged with going armed with intent, possession of a controlled substance, marijuana, failure to affix a tax stamp, and assault while participating in a felony. Evans is being charged as an adult in this case. Authorities tonight searched Armstrong City Hall this week as the investigation there continues into misconduct by city officials. The misconduct investigation kicked off back in February of this year. Then Mayor Greg Bum, Police Chief Craig Merrill and former city clerks Connie Thackeray have pled not guilty to the charges against them. Mary Statton and Tracy Lang have pled guilty. The charges against the group include misappropriation of city funds, fraudulent public records, deploying a taser against a civilian in exchange for cash, and concealing embezzlement. Anyone with information about any of this criminal activity is asked to call the number there on your screen. That's the Emmett County Sheriff's Office, 712-362-2639. A Sioux Falls man is now behind bars after authorities say he sexually assaulted a minor in Marcus, Iowa. 22-year-old Jesus Delira Limon is charged with third-degree sexual abuse. That's a Class C felony. According to the Marcus PD, the assault happened on September 25th. A warrant was put out for his arrest and he was taken into custody Tuesday this week. Delira Limon is being held in the Cherokee County Jail on a $10,000 bond tonight. We are just weeks away now from the November 2nd election, and there are a few new voting restrictions that you should be aware of. Sioux City Auditor Pat Gill reminds Siouxlanders tonight, early voting is still an option. Gill says so far the early voting turnout has been shockingly small, and he encourages the general public to get those ballots in as quickly as possible. The deadline to request your absentee ballot has since expired, but you obviously do still have time to cast your vote. Perfect that we are going to have a 90% reduction in the number of people who participated in this election uh, two years ago by mail. Four city council candidates will be on that ballot. Newcomers Ike Rayford and Matthew O'Kane, the incumbents Dan Moore and Alex Waters. In Sergeant Bluff, old roads are new again and they're open for travel. <laughs> That made it official. First street opened for traffic at exactly noon today for the first time in six months. In April, the city of Sergeant Bluff began reconstructing and beautifying the first street area. Mayor John Winkle says the project is necessary for its growing community. We didn't have enough lanes for traffic all the way through, so it created bottlenecks as our community has been growing. And uh, we've, we really believe in controlled growth here, growth that we can support. And so this is another way to support that growth is to improve our traffic flow on our main street and to beautify it. The mayor adds that things like permanent traffic signals and decorative brickwork will be completed at a later date. That is due to supply chain issues. The Chris Larson Park was rocking this morning. Today, construction crews dropped a 50-ton boulder onto a pedestal there, furthering the redevelopment of that park. The park is planned to have several new assets and is supposed to honor the expedition of Lewis and Clark while also better educating the community. Summer 
I have uh, Ray, Ray Bubba Sorensen, who's a, the artist that painted all the Freedom Rocks in Iowa. I've contracted him to come up and he's gonna paint images on this rock uh, of various things that had to do with this location when Lewis and Clark were here. If you want to donate to the project, you can visit our website. That's suanproud.com. We do have a link available there for you. Cannot wait to see that be done, although it's not quite uh, park walking weather, uh, I would say at least. Not the prettiest day outside, but temperatures recovering somewhat from yesterday. Yeah, not exactly. You know, we had some showers out there today. The temperature certainly dropped like a rock earlier on this week. Checking out those highs today, 40s and 50s spread across the map. 54 for Sioux City, 53 in Yankton. Checking the Friday night football forecast. Moving forward in time this evening, you can expect to have some kind of chilly conditions in the bleachers as it looks like we'll have mostly clear skies as temperatures descend through the 40s into the 30s through the second half. Potential for seeing some frost once again tonight too. We'll talk about a rain chance coming our way this weekend and more. It's all in the 9 on 9 forecast. Sophie. Thanks, Scott. As the temperatures drop, Americans could see a dramatic rise in their heating prices. The U.S. energy officials report that households could see their heating bills jump as much as 54% from last winter. Senators tonight are calling on the Department of Health and Human Services to act quickly and distribute the additional $4.5 billion that was already approved to help low-income households pay their bills in the pandemic relief packages. That's why I've just written to the HHS Secretary, Javier Becerra, to ask that the department release this year's LIHEAP funds at the highest level possible as quickly as possible. If your heating bills goes up 50 to 100 to 150 dollars, uh, and even more uh, a month that 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 cuts into your ability to buy food or to travel. LIHEAP helps qualifies low income families to pay their winter heating bills. We do have income requirements for the tri-state area posted online right now on our website at the address on your screen or you could click this story on our KCAU 9 free mobile news app. And now to the fatal shooting on the set of Alec Baldwin's new movie Rust. The sheriff there says the actor and producer fired the prop firearm that killed a cinematographer and injured a director. ABC's Morgan Norwood has the very latest now from Los Angeles. An urgent and puzzling investigation into why a shot from a prop gun that police say was fired by actor Alec Baldwin killed one crew member and injured another on the set of the Western-inspired film Rust. No, he that yelled at me at lunch because I asked him about revision. He's supposed to check the guns. He's responsible for Are it. Are now, Mimi? No, no, no. I'm a script supervisor. 42-year-old director of photography, Helena Hutchins, seen in this Instagram picture posted from the set just days ago, died from her injuries. Heralded as a rising star behind the camera, Hutchins in this post showing her excitement for being a part of the production. She was the kind of filmmaker who would stand in any uncomfortable place with her camera to get a shot that she thought would be the right shot. The other shooting victim, 48-year-old director Joel Souza, reportedly released from emergency care. Alec Baldwin tweeting Friday, there are no words to convey my shock and sadness regarding the tragic accident that took the life of Felina Hutchins, a wife, mother, and deeply admired colleague of ours. Baldwin going on to say he's fully cooperating with authorities as they address how this happened. There is a system of checks and balances before any actor is touching a prop gun. And that usually includes a prop master bringing the prop over to set, then an AD checking the prop gun, and then it goes to the actor. The district attorney reviewing the incident, releasing a statement saying, we don't know if charges will be filed. We will look into all the facts and evidence of the case with great discretion. Championship buckles are up for grabs at this weekend's South Dakota Rodeo Association Finals Rodeo. After months of competition with rodeo stretching from Irene to Buffalo, the three-day season ending event starting tonight at the WH Lion Fairgrounds. That's, of course, in Sioux Falls. It's a time for local cowboys to test out their skills. We like to say, you know, our local weekend warriors, the guys that um, uh, can't be gone, you know, four or five days a week. Um, chasing the, the big pro rodeos. This is set up for our, for our South Dakota amateurs. The finals rodeo will stay kicking throughout this weekend if you're interested. Well, you might have noticed gas prices are up by more than a dollar a gallon since one year ago. More on what you can do if you're trying to ease some pain at the pump coming up.
And frost is likely to make a return to Siouxland tonight. We'll have cooler high temperatures, primarily in the 50s. And we're dialing up some more rain chances for next week. Your 9 on 9 forecast straight ahead. You're watching KCAU 9 News with Sophie Erber and Chief Meteorologist Scott Larson. This is KCAU 9 News at 5. To close out the 9 on 9 forecast. Here's a beautiful picture that came to us from Michael Pope. You can see that some uh, harvesting was going on in the background there. Thanks again to Michael for snapping that photo and sending it in. If you have one that you want to share with Sue Lamb, make sure to send those in to the email address that you see on your screen, weather at kcautv.com. When we get your photo, we'll send you a form, fill it out real quick, send it back, and we'll show your picture on TV. Yes, uh, especially if you catch more of those fall foliage pictures. I can't get enough of those right now. Yeah, we shared a beautiful one yesterday from Akron. Uh, looking forward to getting some more. All right, thanks a lot, Scott. Well, there's a new kind of scooter popping up on streets across our country, but it's got an extra wheel. We'll show you why coming up in just a few minutes. But first, a few ways to get a little more mileage out of your gas tank as fuel prices are rising to their highest levels in seven years. That's coming up next. Gas prices are up by more than a dollar a gallon since one year ago. Now their highest level in about seven years. ABC's Morgan Norwood has more on what you can do to improve your miles per gallon and spend less at the pump. Gas prices are up by more than a dollar a gallon since a year ago to their highest level in seven years. And it doesn't look like they're coming down anytime soon. So how can you save money on gas? Mike Quincy of Consumer Reports says there are a lot of simple things you can do to improve your miles per gallon and spend less at the pump. One of the, the number one things is to check your, uh, your tire's air pressure. If a, if a tire is underinflated, has uh, lower pressure and has a higher rolling resistance. The tire has to work much harder to get down the road. Another tip is to drive steady. Avoid abrupt stops and starts if you can. And when you're on the highway, if your car can maintain a steady, consistent speed, that will improve your fuel economy. Getting rid of unnecessary items inside your car that are making it heavier is another way to get better mileage and check what you're carrying on the outside too. One of the best ways to improve your car's fuel economy is to take off any unused roof racks. And, and also there are bike racks that are attached to the rear trailer hitch. Uh, all of those racks create lots of aerodynamic drag and 50% of your car's engine power goes to overcoming aerodynamics. When you do fill up, think about the kind of gas you're buying. Sometimes people might think that using premium gas is going to improve their car's overall performance. But unless your car requires it, we wouldn't bother. And where you buy gas can also make a difference. Gas stations farther off major highways usually have lower gas prices, and there are plenty of apps and websites that can also help you find cheaper gas. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Los Angeles. You might have tried your hand in the past at riding a scooter, but it probably didn't have three wheels on it. We'll take a closer look at this new feature and why it exists. Coming up next, stay with us. Ride scooters have been a fixture on city streets for several years now, but they usually have two wheels. Rich DeMiro takes a new ride on a scooter, which is an easier one to hop on since there's a little less of a learning curve. Between public bikes and pay-as-you-go scooters, options are expanding to get around town. People are using it to commute to work, uh, make a quick trip to the grocery stores, as well as for recreational purposes as well. Now a new choice. This is our S200. It's an electric scooter with three wheels instead of two. And is meant to provide another form factor, another mobility options to uh, serve folks with different abilities and different preferences. The scooter is making its debut in Santa Monica, the epicenter of shared mobility. You scan the code here, this is QR code that unlocks the bird. It was here that bird made its debut several years ago with dockless scooters you rent by the minute and leave anywhere when you're done. Since then, cities have taken a more commanding role in the rules surrounding these devices. It offers more balance. It doesn't need a kickstand. Chris Grant is an operations manager for SPIN, owned by a subsidiary of Ford. There's a, a way lower barrier to entry. You don't have to worry about learning how to ride it, learning how to balance anything like that. You can just kind of hop on and uh, pull the throttle and go. You use a smartphone app to unlock the scooter. SPIN also offers a way to text requests, so users can ride even without a smartphone or credit card. Safety first. Rentals cost a dollar to start, then about 35 cents a minute to ride. 
These three-wheeled scooters are made by Ninebot Segway. Typical bike bell to alert people that you're coming their way. Something we're really proud of here is the turn signal. They can currently cruise up to 10 miles an hour. We take a live look outside right now. Sunny skies over Wayne America. Don't go away though, Scott returns with one more check on your forecast. Before we wrap up here at five, let's check in now with Tim for what's coming up at six. Hi, Tim. Hey, good afternoon on this Friday, Sophie. Coming up in just a half an hour, doctors and nurses who continue to work on the front lines just a year into this pandemic continue to see problems. They tell us that they're continuing to become fatigued by the caseload and it's uh, going well beyond just crowded hospitals. They've also had to deal now with protesters and confronting misinformation campaigns. Find out what they're having to say needs to happen coming up at six o'clock. Meanwhile, municipal elections are less than two weeks away and Woodbury County election officials say that they're ready. They just hope the voters are as well. Important information headed into the November 2nd election coming up after World News tonight. Of course, that'll be late night for us, Sophie, election night, November the 2nd. That's right. Coming up very quickly. Thanks a lot, Tim. And uh, kind of an interesting evening because it's chilly, but it looks nicer than I think it feels outside, Scott. Yeah, Sophie, a lot of sunshine visible out there, but it is a touch on the cool side. We'll maintain that as we head into tomorrow morning with some areas of frost forming up, a freeze warning out for communities like Carroll and Pocahontas extended northward toward Emmitsburg. So again, just be aware of that tonight. Temperatures crashing back down into the 20s and 30s. Rain chances for Sunday and again on Tuesday evening, lasting over into Wednesday. It looks like highs will be seasonal in the 50s and 60s. All right. Thanks so much, Scott. Thank you for joining us. We hope you'll join us again here at 6 with Tim and Jake. Until then, have a great night, everyone.